In this video we are going to be looking particularly at word processors in Microsoft Word and we're looking how we can create a form in Microsoft Word. Now you might be asking what exactly is a form? Well the best way that I can explain it to you is by using an example. So let's say we've got a society at school, the computer society, and we have a lovely application form that members can fill in in order to join our society. Now in the old days we would type this all up and give it to them on a piece of paper and they would write it on paper and then we capture the data manually, things like that. Now we are more sophisticated and we want to create a digital form. In other words, we create this digitally and then I send it to them on an email and then they type in their name and surname. So yeah, they just type in what they want. But the problem is like it doesn't look very nice and people can edit this and they can mess it up. And I want to be able to, to make sure that they fill it in properly by using the correct options available to them. So I can limit what people can do on my form. I just want them to type in their names and that in the relevant places. And I can almost set formats to how they must fill that information in. And I can do that using form tools. Now the problem with form tools is I don't know where they are. I've looked for them all over the show and I can't find them. That's because you need a tab called the developer tab. And if you notice here, I don't have mine. And yours might not be visible either. So the first step is to make sure that you've got the developer tab. And if it's not there, you can right click on any place where there's a little blank spot over there. You can customize your ribbon. There are lots of other places over here that you can do it as well under options. But if I come here to the ribbon, there's developer. It's not ticked. So give it a tick. And all of a sudden, there's our developer tab. Now we've got access to all the tools we need for forms. So that's the first and most important step. If you don't have that, you can't find where the tools are. Um, so there we go. So let's click on it and see what it looks like. So over here, there's lots of little options here, Visual Basic and all that. Lots of complicated stuff. I'm only going to focus particularly on the controls here. So there's design mode of what it looks like when you are in design mode. And you can see properties and then you're out of design mode, things like that. But let's mainly look at these controls over here. So these are the controls that we are going to use in place of these little lines that I've got. I don't want those lines. So for example, that is a rich con text control, rich text context control, where the user can type in what they want. And then I can select this. The user must also be able to type in a block there. So I'll t there's a block for them to type in. I'm going to take that text away though. Boom. I don't like it. Oh, there we go. So they can tap here to enter text. The date of birth. Well, they must enter in a date. Well, I don't want to use that. There's a lovely little thing here called a date picker. I'm going to click on that. So I'm going to delete all this. And say, hey, put in a date picker there. So now when I click on this option, you can see it looks like all the dates. Now you'll notice I'm not in design mode. If I go into design mode, then it looks a little bit different. And then you can right click on them and change the properties of these particular options, like what type of format it must be and stuff like that. So you do have those options and you can have grade and stuff like that. So those are the types of things that you can do. Now, I don't, I'm not a big fan of these particular controls. I don't like the, these controls as much. My favorite controls are these legacy ones. They normally like to ask the legacy ones, but the legacy ones are quite fancy and they look quite nice. So I'm actually going to delete all of these and replace them with legacy options. So I'm going to go ahead and just do that quickly for you. So I replaced those with a, for example, a control. Like I just went here and I changed it to whatever that little, that text form field. I like that text form field. So it looks slightly different, the legacy tools, but they do give nice options as well. So I replaced those ones. If I right click on them now, I can go to properties and I can do some changes to those particular fields. I can say it must be a regular text or it must be a number or whatever. So for this case, I don't mind it being regular text, but I don't want them to type more than 50 characters for a surname. And you can say, oh, what about the format of the text? Well, I want the first letter to always be a capital. That can make sense, but you could make it uppercase or lowercase. It's up to you. So things like that. So you could do things like that. You can also add help text over here. So if they need help, if they on the status bar, it'll be help that you can type what text must be displayed. Or if they press the help key, F1, what must display. If they need help, you can also do those options as well. And for name, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make this regular text. I'm going to limit them to maybe 50 characters. And I want that to be first letter capital. Okay. You can probably make a title case. It's probably better. My only problem is the, the date field. I'm not a big fan of the date field for legacy. You could use it. You can go to properties and we could set the type to a date and then we can set the format and all that type of thing. Um, so we want it to be day. So you can actually type in. We want it to be, uh, I want it to be, uh, dd slash mm slash wah wah wah. 
there we go I want that to be my format and there we go and you can do things like that um, but that date pick is actually quite nice because you could just see the calendar what about grade well let's go right click on this and go to properties well this must be a number and it only accepts like an 8 or 9 a 10 11 or 12 so I'm going to limit it to only two characters so that they can't give me grade 100 okay obviously it doesn't it doesn't stop them from typing grade 20 but you get the idea it does limit them a little bit okay instead I could probably have like a drop down list box where they can select which grade they're from which is what I'm going to do here with class I'm actually going to take the class and I'm going to use the option here if I move across to a drop down form field now that one's quite nice because if I right click on that and I go to properties you can add what must be in the list so we've got class A class B class C class D and class E and if you've made a mistake you see there it is a and if I, oh, I forgot to add the F class you can always right click it and go to properties and go add it or delete remove a class or move things up and down to change the order so you have all these options available to you what about if I want them to type in yes or no well let's say I'm gonna I don't want them to type yes and no at the same time I want this to be a little block where they can click on Oh, what do we have here oh there's a little box a little checkbox that they can click on and you can right click on that as well as change the properties you can make it by default it's checked you can say it's not checked you can give it a particular size and you can do that as well and then they can type whatever they want at the bottom so I'm going to make that a limited text so just a normal form field I just will put this over here with the Poppy Act you need to make sure that you're not using people's data without their permission or that they know what you are using their data for because people have a right to privacy and to their information so you need to make sure that you specify and what exactly you're going to do with all this personal information it's very important to do that so it's actually not even a good idea to actually ask for their name make sure that you ask permission before you ask for people's personal details so there we go so I've got this lovely little form and you might be going um Mr Long it doesn't it doesn't work it, like you said this is a drop down list box there's no options I know I know I know if I what I need to do so the first step we said was the developer tab the second step was to design your form and then the third step was to add all these controls that we want now how do I okay now I want to send this to my my friends or to the, the people in the school so that they can fill it in well um what you need to do as the last step is you need to restrict editing so when I click on restrict editing you'll see here there is an option here to allow this type of editing and I can go and say fill in in forms now just take note if I'm in design mode you can't click on this button over here so make sure you're not in design mode but let's let's go back so when there are options here when I select fill in forms even when I didn't have fill in on forms no other changes you can specify who can change there are options over here but this is a form that we're filling in so we want filling in forms then okay it's still not working yes because we still need to enforce the protection if we enforce the protection it'll be in the mode that the users can use so that they can type in their information so I'm going to click on this and it's just going to ask me for a password I'm going to type in one two three four five let's do it again one two three four five make sure you remember your password so that you can unprotect it if you need to make changes so there we go I can just close this I don't want them to see that now I can send this to my friends why because look here if I click over here they can type it in they, if I click over here on this part I can't change anything on this form except for the form controls so I can so I can't mess up the form I can only use it use the parts where I can fill in my data Mr. Long is my name is obviously Mr. I'm born on the 21st of November 2000 so let's pretend I was born in 2000 okay just just go with me here what grade am I in? well I'm in grade 11 I changed my form I must change that quickly there's probably a property there that I need to change over there well, that must be 11 and this must be 20 1990 I'll click away oh okay I'll find out why I think it must be capital M's there I'll go change that later but you get the idea it is working out that's uh, that's actually why I prefer the date picker it's a little bit better than that class what about class well oh invalid date okay so I'll just leave it at that I'll escape this just leave it blank for now we'll sort out later now if I come here oh look there's all the options that I had oh like, I'm in the, the E class so let's go E class you can see my little drop down list box oh did I take cut yes I did um why do you want to join this RT because I'm cool like that because I'm cool like that okay is that good enough reason I don't know we'll see if they accept it 
and then the user can then save the form and then send it to uh, whoever sent it to them and now they will collect all these different forms and see all the data that's filled in so there we go so that's how you create a form in microsoft word if i want to go fix up that little mistake i made i can just go to restrict editing i can stop the protection now type in my password that we had and then i'm going to right click on this form hey, i don't like the format i gave it let me just use one of the default ones let me use, oh, I see it's probably capital M is what I need. Yeah, oh, capital M, that makes more sense. But I'll leave it like that. That's probably better. There we go. And then I can reinforce it if I will need to. There we go. So that's how you can edit and change. Remember, make sure the developer tab is open for you. Make sure that you can see it. Always customize your ribbon so that you can see that little tick on the developer tab. Okay, that is forms. Please support the channel by clicking on that subscribe button. Even if you turn off notifications, that you can still help us by subscribing. And remember, the most important thing is don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.